What? Who? Oh, I must have dozed off. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. What do you say, Rufus? Yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier.
I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. To the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined by lustrous forests, and perched on the edge of a pristine lake. It had a main street with all the essentials, including a place to sip coffee. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. It even had a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Typical, maybe even forgettable. But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. Actually, it was a girl. Her name was... Jenny LeClue. And she was the world's greatest detective. Finkelstein residence. Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. Richard? Yes, I got it. I did, and my answer is no. I understand that, but... Well, yes, of course, but... No, no, no. Nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my books stand for. No, not yet, but... If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying.
You don't understand what you're asking for. You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down? Kill off my characters and destroy everything I've built over the last 30 years? Fine. I'll give you what you want. But I warn you, I'm a stream of consciousness writer. And you have unleashed my fury. Good day, sir. Boring? Predictable? Blah! Well, if it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. It should have been another perfect day in Arthurton. But today was different. And nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny LeClue was dead. Her skin was pale, her eyes glassy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? No, no, no! Never move the victim! Mrs. LeClue, she's doing it again. Jenny LeClue, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. But he's doing it wrong! As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. With only the evidence laid before us, we build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time, until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Mrs. LeClue. Okay, you've all had a chance to study the body? Who can postulate how she met her demise? Ooh, uh, me, me! I think it was an accident? Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor. And cracked her head open. Like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really, how can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually, you're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded murder. Murder? Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh yes, there is. It was murder. And I can prove it. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Then she'd analyze the data. And finally... Deduce the real cause of death. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. They were her window to the world and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. What a waste of perfectly good coffee. Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. <laughs> Smells like burnt matches. Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable. 
but her grandmother had knitted it, and so it was her favorite. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. And slippery, but also immaculately clean. Approximately eight sizes too big, and covered in mud. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. I've seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. Jenny was a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. How do I know the victim didn't slip? boots are filthy. They should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. So where are they? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? What was the real cause of death? you in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. <laughs> it smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus! Also found in common garden fertilizer. The same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. Someone clearly wanted her dead! Ah, the case of the dead lab assistant. Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. No footprints in an unshattered mug? She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is the story of a scorned ex-lover. Jenny? The gardener, enacting his revenge. Jenny? A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins! That's quite enough, thank you. What happens to the gardener? Is this gonna be on the test? Remember, class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side, even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So have a light lunch. The students need to think for themselves, Jenny. That's why they're here at Gumbolt. To learn. I just figured we all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Wait, before you go, I have something for you. Cool! What is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? 
The Lecluse didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. <laughs> 